All right, today I've got a little project here I'm working on. I just bought my son. I think it's more for data. But uh, got him an SCX24. And I don't. I did, never had a battery that took the JST PH 2.0 plug like this one. So, and it seems like there's a lot of people that don't know about this plug. When I was looking online at some of the videos on the SAX24 when I was watching it. But the JST PH 2.0, it's got a singular slot right here. And there's different kinds of JST connectors. You'll see there's multiple variations of this. But the one you want is the JST PH 2.0. And you'll see it's got a, you need the female plug. It's got a singular slot right here for the other connector to mate into. And you can buy these with the wires or without. Um, I probably should have bought them without the wires so I could put my own wires on there because I'd probably like to have a bigger gauge. And I'll probably end up remaking these later. But this is a uh, 16 gauge wire here. And this is going to be like an 18 gauge. Um, but it'll do for what I'm doing. If they don't last very long, I'll just make some better ones. But anyway, this is what you need. You need the Depending on your charger, my charger has XT60 plugs on it. Um, this is the Hoda D6 Pro. Um, but it takes the XT60s. And I don't like having a whole bunch of different stuff connected to the charger. I just, I just use individual plugs. Um, I've got the Tamiya plugs, the EC5 adapters, you know, all the various ones. Deans. We've got some Dean's ones. So I'm just going to make some for the little JSTs here. And we've got a soldering station. I'm set up to about 380, 380 degrees. Got some flux. 60% uh, rosin core solder. And I'm not much into, I'm, I'm not big into electronics. Uh, I'll, I'll be the first to admit, I don't know. A whole lot about electronics but I can manage so we will get going on this and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little flux on my wires here because these are already tinned but I like to retin my own wires I don't like having it done for me even though somebody that did it's probably better at it than me So I'm just heating it up and making sure it gets into the wire. Okay. Now on these... And this is some nice, the blue tack, um, if you do any soldering and stuff, people have the helping hands and all that stuff, and I don't like fiddling around with that. I just like the blue tack. I'm also... I need to trim this brush off, it's a piece of crap. Just put a little flux around the connectors. So you can just do it like that. It'd be easier. Okay. And I need a bigger tip. Um, I've got different tips for this gun, but I'm not sure at the moment where they're at. So I'm just going to make do with this one. Got a little 
little pot there. I probably should lay this on its side actually. Make it a little easier. And you'll see when the solder actually takes to the piece, it'll it'll run and fill in the corners. You, when you first start, you'll have like a ball of solder on your soldering iron, and when it when it actually makes contact with the part, it'll just flow. You'll see it. Actually, I'm gonna put a little bit more in this one. Help if I turn it to where I can get to it. Okay. And I used to watch my dad do this when I was a kid. He was a he was a whiz when it came to electronics. I mean, he could. I watched him build circuit boards from scratch. He would buy the the board with no wiring, you know, none of the little traces on it at all, and he would draw the leads out where he wanted all the wires to go, and put the chips on the board, drill the holes, and all that stuff. And he would make the coolest stuff. I mean, he had a this one thing that he would attach to his uh, CB that changed his voice. And this is back in the 80s. So my dad used to be a cop. And he, he, I don't know why he wanted to change his voice on a CB, but my dad did. He had one. And on these XT60s, the, the pointed side is your negative side. So just something to remember. I always remember that the, neg the negative side goes to the pointed, pointed terminal here. And first thing you got to do when you're doing this is make sure you don't forget your heat shrink. Because once you solder it on, you can't get the heat shrink on. So you'll have to unsolder it. And I do that all the time. I'm surprised they actually remembered it there. So what we're going to do is just lay this across here like so. And feed the wire in underneath of it. Boom. And you want to try to get your wires on as straight as possible. I actually got that one coming off there just a little bit crooked, but better to be crooked towards the inside than the outside. And I've actually put a little twist in it. Actually, here's my OCE kicking in. I'm actually going to unsolder this because I've got the connector on in its free form it wants to rotate on me so I'm going to flip this over and make sure I've got the red wire on the top here. In the long run it'll make the cable sit better. You won't get twists and kinks in it. Okay, did a little better job that time. See, I almost forgot. And there we go. So now I'm going to turn on Got a little rework station here built into my soldering station. It's got this cool little, similar to a hair dryer, but really hot. It's 
much better than a lighter. You don't get scorched heat shrink. So there we go. Turn that off for now. Until I get this I'm going to cut a piece here. Because this, this end is going to be, you're going to be connecting and disconnecting cables all the time. So odds are it's going to mess up here if it's going to mess up anywhere. This, you can get a pretty good grip on that when you're pulling it out of the charger. But, you know, I'll probably, here's what I'll probably do. If I put it down there, it's going to... Yeah, I'll just leave that as it is. So what I want is for this this cape, this cape heat shrink to come down to about here. So I've got a nice area there to get a hold of this without pulling on the, the wires individually. So I'll probably just cut this in half. Yeah. Cutting it in half would be good. Okay. So now I need to turn this back on. back on camera here. And there we go. There's our connector. Now I just got to make one more. And that should give you an idea how to make your cable for your SCX24. Thanks for watching.